Well, good weekend, all. I wrap in with your weekend edition, because we're going to look at weekly charts on your Spider ETF stock market. And this is for Friday, the 14th of June, 2024, and it is Father's Day weekend. So we have a sale. And simply put, the sale, let me bring this up if I could. There we go. Father's Day, flash sale, half off. So let me explain this. Let's assume you want to get the Spider ETF video, see what my subscribers do. Instead of the introductory price of $8.95, $4.48 for the 30 days. If you want the combo of the futures and it, $8.45 for the 30 days, or $3.98 for the futures only. It only pertains to that. It ends on Tuesday. I wanted this out over the Father's Day weekend. It's a great gift. You can do anything you want with it. I wish you the best, and you just go to our website, iraepstein.com. Under research, you can move your cursor up here. I want to wish all the dads out there a very happy Father's Day. It's a good gift if you're buying it for somebody, by the way, and you can do that very easily. All right. The next thing we have to look at, remember, it's Juneteenth coming in here now. So we'll get the New York Fed Empire State Manufacturing Survey for June, but then on Tuesday a lot of markets are closed. Everything gets pushed back on the normal government data. Everything. And then we, we had today the rig count and they lost four more rigs according to Baker Hughes and we're about 97 less rigs than we were at this time a year ago. Wow. Weather, absolutely horrific out uh, what's going on. The heat moving through the country. You're going to be out east getting a bunch of it. The rainstorms, well, Florida had a little bit of a break today, but I understand it's coming right back at them tomorrow. And we could get our first tropical named storm, the big one, in the Gulf. So you got to pay attention to that. Uh, the conditions are ripe for a crazy year with all this, so we will see what goes on. Now, this was a wild, wild time in the market. TLT and BND, big bids in the market because we saw the CPI, the PPI come in weaker. We saw weak labor and we saw a Fed that had a chance to see the CPI and gave us on average one rate cut. Now the market did just what I said after I saw that. The market will look at that and go, they got it wrong and it'll, the market will say, the odds are now you're going to get two, September and December. You watch. That's what the market is saying. When you take a look and you look at NVIDIA, after the 10 for 1 split running away. Broadcom, I know a lot of people have asked me what I cover that. Well, it's going to split in July. Why don't we cover it after then? Because right now it's, what, a $1,700 stock or something? It's too expensive for the average guy to look at. Copper looks to me like it's coming into finally some support. Rivian still dropping right here. Boeing still getting nothing but problems. Now two issues happened. One plane almost hit the ocean off Hawaii, got within 400, uh, yeah, I think they said 400 feet of the ocean. That's pretty darn close when you think about it. And then they had this, what they call a rolling effect. Sounds like pastry, doesn't it? But it's when a plane does this. And they got to figure out why. It's probably something not major. It's probably limited to that plane and probably some electronic went bad, you know. I've been in planes that have done that. I used to fly, so I have some knowledge. I'm not an expert, but I have some. Uh, so, you know, you look at all this to see just what they're doing. You can see Schwab here has got the 73 and a quarter, down 14 cents at this point. Um, Apple. Apple was the story. They come out, they told us about what they're going to do, and the market went to sleep on them. I looked at the market, didn't expect anything. The next morning, apparently, everybody had the same idea, and the buying frenzy began. And before you knew what was going on, it was back to being the world's most expensive company. In other words, the valuation. Wow. I mean, so what people are saying is this. If the AI can live up to the hype, and we don't know what their AI is going to do or not, but if it does, they're making it only from the 15 phone on. So everything 14, which I have one of those earlier, they won't be able to do the AI. So what have they done? They've kicked up their cycle for September. So as soon as these phones come out, a number of people will buy them right away. We'll then hear it's worth it or it isn't worth it. 
it may take five, six months before you get that. You may get that phone and not get the features of it. I don't know because they didn't go into a lot of detail with that. So you got to keep your eyes on that. That's very, very important. Obviously, NVIDIA doesn't stop the rally. And it's a tale of two cities. What do I mean? If you have AI in an index, up and away. NASDAQ, S&P. You don't have AI waiting, you go down. Russell and the Dow. That's what's really going on. Two different worlds at work here. We'll see what goes on. There will be a day of reckoning. I don't know when it'll come, but it'll, it'll be similar to the EV market, where everybody rushed in. As you know, everybody was a car developer, and then you discovered that the market, for at least in America, it wasn't there, and it got hurt. Well, everybody's rushing into AI like there's no tomorrow. I am not saying it's not going to be a big game changer. I am saying it will have stumbles along the way. You will find that they do a lot of development and then it's either too expensive, it doesn't do what they thought, and the market gets disenchanted, then it'll come back. This is the game changer. So are EVs, by the way. I mean, four years from now, five years from now, you'll probably be on a new car getting an EV. But to start with, too soon. So I have from one of our guys, uh, I think it was Lorenz, he uh, basically asked me to do SCHD, which is the Charles Schwab, this is the dividend part of it, and this is where the market is right now. When we look here, and you can see this is the dividend equity part, lower highs, lower lows in a downtrend. Where's the battleground? 18-day average of closes. Where's the support? Most likely the first number, 7607. Why is it down? You know, Schwab as a whole, I must tell you, I, I think they've had trouble with their Ameritrade merger. I, I, I had an account, so I, I know what I'm saying. Uh, I don't like their charting software. I never did like it, and I still think it's not a great piece of software. And if you don't get it and you try to do anything on their website, you're back into 1990. Basically, that, that's how they make it work for you. Number two, what happens to them and the banks if interest rates now are falling? Remember, we're, we got today back to, what, 4.2 at one point in the 10 years. So we're not at 5%. We just lost three quarters of a point for all purposes. What happens to the deposit income at certain companies? A lot of these companies, Schwab, uh, most of the brokerage companies make money on your money, they give you a certain amount and they keep a certain amount, and that's one of the major sources of income to those firms. So be aware as to what's going on. There's, how do you think you pay for these free commissions? You don't, you don't pay, but how do they get their money, their revenue and so on? Is the deposit swell, they make money on fees and spreads. Well, you can see what's going on through here. So are they getting hurt from that? They could be. Uh, when we take a look at momentum, it's down. So as I see the chart, the pros are going short against the 18-week average. They're probably over 78, 70, say, nah, I don't want to be short anymore. And if it gets down to the Bollinger Band at 7607, they'll begin peeling off shorts. That's what I'm seeing there. When we look at SMCI, what I always do is, this is what we covered during the week, and I back away and I take a look. We had a nice rally, and it should have trouble at the 18-week average. Their order flow is great. I looked at the product, uh, how they uh, cooled the chips and everything. It's a phenomenal, neat way, and their back orders are really good. Yet it hasn't caught on fire, right? Do you think that's catching on fire? You had a break in a market that had an upside bias. You came into the 18-week, like I so often tell you, and you've really gone nowhere in the process. Interesting. If you take out, not this week, but last week's low, the week before, at 611.22, you're probably going to go down, at 711.22, I'm sorry, you'll probably go down to the 670 area. So keep your eye on that. KRE, I want no part of commercial real estate. I, I, I've been clear to all the traders that they get my research. I keep reading about little banks that are getting into trouble, and it's one after the other you're starting to hear about. It's not a snowball, but all of a sudden you hear it, and then you're hearing they're selling buildings for 66% discount, 50% discounts. Somebody's taking a hit, and it's not just the developer. 
So some of these banks are going, and they put money away for it, but they're going to be, you're going to see, they're going to have to be using those funds for bad uh, loans, and that's what you're probably getting in this right now. MCHI, China. So we have been up and over the 18-week average here since April. This is the first break back, and you could get to the 4170 level to test the market out. It's not in an uptrend on the swing line, but the bias has stayed up, and you're in a corrective mode in the market. On the energy sector, well, it's just not looking pretty. Now, the energy sector here, when you look at XLE, these are the refineries and so on. And what do we see? We're, we're losing rigs. They're doing good business, but you're coming down in this. And right now, if you want, you, you can make an argument that if you keep falling, the 100-week average in green and the Bollinger Band, let's call it the 85.50 area, that's probably going to be an area that the market wants to look at. In the dollar, the dollar seems to be resolving itself that higher for longer means dollar gets a bid and the euro gets an offer. In the metal markets, I think this correction could run a course into the 18-week average of closes to look for support. There's nothing here at this point that I see that can turn it just bullish. But it's got the upside bias. So it's not a sell, but I don't see anything to make it come alive. Here is a market that I'm looking to, for now, just finally, when it reopens on Monday. I think you'll be out of the overbought condition. I expect this number will be under 70. You'll be at the, or very close to the 18-week average of closes, and you're in the area where it should start finding its footing. That's what I'm expecting to see. Lily. All the products they have are working, people are buying them, and away you are. But you're over the upper Bollinger Band. You only stay over that band 5% of the time. It's not a sale to go short, but it is certainly an area to take money off the table. And I keep hearing that. Different uh, commentators are taking some money off the table here. Then we get to Dell, which just didn't get the pop. Their numbers look fine, and everyone thought that they'd get the server business and it would pop. It came down. It wasn't a fluke. You went down and you haven't bounced yet. I look for support to now hit us at 122.85 in the market. Rivian pulling back into the support area unless it gets back underneath. Right here, the, uh, I think that is, is it 889 or 789? Let's take a look and we'll get this right now. That number is 989. I looked, I, I can see a number there. I think you're gonna see people testing the water to buy the market here at 1081 and have stops under there and they'll say, I'll risk a dollar because if it can hold here, maybe it can stay over this number and build a base to work from. So I wouldn't be surprised if that goes on. I see nothing in meta. Look at how you've narrowed in the Bollinger Bands. In markets that have been this volatile, it's lost its volatility for the moment. It's just sitting here. I don't see anything to do there. But you have something to do. If you want to take advantage of the sale, the Father's Day moment, this is it. Again, just go to our website, irapstein.com, 398 for 30 days, 448 or 845. It's a pretty neat deal. It ends Tuesday. So it's just meant to carry you through this Father's Day. You can give it as a gift. You can get it for yourself, and away you go. irapstein.com. You can move your cursor to the top here. Give it a click, and that'll get you going, too. Have a great one. See you all Monday.